Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, your number one source for income-oriented investing. Always a fun day when one of my personal favorite uh, income-oriented fund managers in Canada, of course I'm talking about Harvest ETFs, launches not one, not two, but three brand new income-oriented uh, ETFs on the Canadian market. So let's go through these three ETFs together real quick, everyone, and then we will talk to the man himself, Michael Kovac, CEO of Harvest, to tell us all about these ETFs. So let's go through them. The first one is going to be H Big, the Harvest Balanced Income and Growth ETF. So this is a first of its kind. As you will quickly notice from the name, as soon as you see balanced in there, uh, typically what you will find is a split between equities and fixed income or stocks and bonds, right? So typically it's a 60-40 split and that's exactly what this is in this case. If you go to click on this here, product sheet you will get the details of this etf and it is uh you know a 60 40 mix they are going for a 60 percent equity 40 percent fixed income mix so it is an an all-in-one solution here just like it says here there's no management fee but uh on this etf because it's an etf that holds a bunch of other etfs mostly other harvest etfs and that's why it has management fees of zero so no management fee on top but of course, the fund or H big is subject to the management fees of the other ETFs inside this portfolio. So let's uh, just go through the benefits of investing in H big. A little summary here: simple and efficient way to invest in a 60/40 portfolio, high monthly uh, income, cash flow, right? The, the typical harvest way, uh, low to medium risk, all in one solution, steady monthly distribution. So of course, the first thing we want to know is uh, yes, it's 60/40, but we want to know the breakdown. And here is the breakdown, everyone. So on the equity side, on the left here, you'll see the stocks or the equity side and on the right side, the fixed income or bond side. So here is the breakdown. You'll recognize a lot of these ETFs. They are mostly hard. They're all almost all harvest ETFs, not all of them. A couple of um, non-harvest ones here in the fixed income world uh, section. But on the equity side, all harvest ETFs, guys, we should all know about these. So, of course, you have HHL, which is the biggest uh, healthcare covered call ETF in Canada, Harvest's most popular ETF. So you have a nice chunk there and a nice chunk, uh, another 12, 12 and a half percent approximately in HTA, which is technology, another popular tech covered call ETF from Harvest. You have uh, 8% or 8% in three other equity or stock based covered call ETFs. HLIF, which is uh, 30 Canadian stocks, pretty much all dividend stocks, or most of them are anyway. Um, so great uh, Canadian exposure there, 8% in Canadian stocks, blue chip stocks. You have 8% in the global utilities, so utilities all around the world, telecommunication, electric utilities, gas utilities, etc., etc., pipelines as well. And you also have HGR. So HGR is Harvest Global REIT Leaders Income ETF. So uh, this is a difference from their HDIF ETF. So HDIF, very popular ETF. This is their Harvest Diversified Monthly Income ETF. This is pretty much all equity, all stocks here. And it looks like HBIG, the new one, this, the one that does 60-40, is adding different ETFs in here in the Harvest lineup, including HGR and also HIND. So this is one of the three new ETFs that's just launched today, April 15th. By the way, I'm filming this on April 15th. So this is the Harvest Industrial Leaders Income ETF, 5% in there. So might as well uh, check it out right away. So this is also one of the three new ETFs that Harvest has launched today. This is the first ever industrials sector covered call ETF. Um, so the management fee is 0.75% here, 75 basis points. And if you click on, sorry about that, if you click on uh, the products product sheet right here, You'll get this page, which is a little bit more details of what this fund is all about. So this is leading industrial companies and emerging trends, subsector diversification, which means there's diversification within the industrial sector. We'll check out the companies in a quick second, but uh, they, you know, we'll, and we'll talk about this with Michael Kovacs in a bit. Why did they decide to launch this ETF? Well, I think they think it's a good time for industrial stocks uh, in North America because uh, you know, there's le there was legislation and a lot of um, projects or announcements of projects to build, right? And this is, of course, going to be good for industrial companies that that take care of uh, these projects or are involved in this stuff. So, some great uh, potential here with industrial companies. That is the premise behind this ETF. And if we scroll down and just look at uh, the companies here, there's 20 of them. You'll recognize a lot of them. 
So what I really like about this ETF is that there's diversification within the industrial sectors, right? You'll recognize a lot of companies, of course, Caterpillar is there, UPS, GE, even Uber, which has to do with transportation. So there's all kinds of subsectors and, and it's diversified within the industrial sector. Uh, really, really cool. So that is the brand new uh, Harvest Industrial Leaders Income ETF, which of course you could, you know, if you're really interested, you could get it. Um, separately and uh, the yields are not mentioned yet because it's not one year yet that the fund is out but the first distribution has been declared on this ETF as well as the other two so it's very easy to figure out what the yield is on your own guys you just take the monthly distribution multiply by 12 and then divide it by the stock price which started at $12 times 100 and you'll get the yield so going back to H big here so the new ETF is a 5% holding in this uh, in this other new ETF, in the 6040 ETF, they also added two little positions here in at three percent each, and the Energy uh, Leaders Plus Income ETF. So this is top energy companies with covered calls, and also uh, uh, Hubble, which is the top U.S. bank leader. So a nice mishmash here. It's not equal weight like H Diff. So a little bit more emphasis on healthcare and technology, which I think is a good thing. So this is the breakdown for the equity portion, the 60 percent. In terms of the 40 percent, which is in fixed income, you have the breakdown here. So of course there are two ETFs: a Happy T, the Harvest Premium Yield Treasure ETF, at 10 percent. This is long term. U.S. government bonds. So this is going to be the one with the most uh, interest rate sensitivity. So it's going to be, I would say, the highest risk one in these. But of course, this is U.S. Treasuries, very, very safe asset class. 10% in this one, 15%, the biggest chunk in the medium term. So a little bit less uh, risky than the long term one. This is the 7 to 10 year HPYM. So these two, as you could see here, they are covered calls, right? They do covered calls on these. That's 25% out of the 40%. But the other 15%, there is no covered calls on these ETFs. These are all a much, much safer, uh, very low risk. Sometimes they're also considered as cash alternatives. Um, T-bill, XSB, and ZPS, which is, uh, you know, this is an iShares or a BlackRock ETF. So it's core Canadian short term. And this is ZPS is the short provincial bond. And then you have T-bill, which is from Harvest. They recently launched it. It's just T-bill. So these three, very, very, you know, a much lower risk because they're all short term. So if you, you know, do the combination, you have a nice mishmash of pretty much uh, fixed income. So uh, I really like what they did here. They really basically did a balanced portfolio geared towards income investors, right? There's a lot of uh, balanced style funds on the Canadian market. They're very easy to pinpoint because they all end in BAL. So of course you have Z-Ball from uh, BMO, H-Ball from Horizons, V-Ball from Vanguard, and X-Ball of course from BlackRock. But these all give a yield of about 2%. There's no covered calls on these, whereas HBIG is much, 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 much higher. So I really feel like this is an ETF uh, designed for investors that are income oriented, want yield, but really like the premise of a balanced type of portfolio. They're right? a 60 40 mix. This is an all in one here. And so that is the, the second new ETF. We talked about HBIG, we talked about HIND, which is their new sector specific harvest industrial leaders income ETF. The third one is HBIE, and this is just an enhanced or a leveraged version, everyone, of HBIG. So just like HRIF is the non-leveraged version of HDIF, right? HBIG is simply the non-leveraged version of HBIE or, or vice versa, however you want to think about it. So HBIE will basically, it's like owning HBIG with 25% leverage, which means uh, obviously higher volatility because you have some leverage in there, but more yield. And again, guys, to figure out the yield on any one of these three, on HBIG, on HBIE, they're their monthly, the first monthly distribution has already been declared. So just multiply that by 12 to get the annual distribution rate divided by the stock price times 100 and you will get the approximate yield. So my personal opinion here, if I'm a long-term investor, I would always personally go with the enhanced one. I would go with HBIE over HBIG, but that's just my personal preference. You guys know that I own uh, HDIF and not HRIF, but they're essentially the same. If you're comfortable with a little bit more volatility with the leverage, you could go with HBIE instead of H uh, big instead of H big. So enough of me talking now. I think we covered really uh, the basics be and the premise behind these ETFs. 
so let's talk to the man himself. Let's talk to Michael Kovacs. Talk to him about why he created or why they launched these new ETFs or what kind of investors are they for? Why would an investor invest in HBIE or HBIG versus HDIF, uh, for example, and why they decide now to launch uh, the industrials one? How, why, how, why do they feel positive about this sector? sector? So let's check it out together right now. All right, I am back with Michael Kovac, CEO of Harvest ETFs. Michael, thanks so much for do, uh, for taking the time. Once again, you're always available. You're always a good friend of the channel. How's it going, my friend? Uh, it's going well, and thank you. Thanks uh, for having us, Adrian. We, uh, we're always happy to be here. We always want to talk about what we're doing. So it's great to be uh, live with you again today. Yeah, I really appreciate it. And a special treat for everyone, right? I mean, not one, not two, but three brand new um, ETFs, all income oriented which mm -hmm. is of great interest, obviously, to my audience. So we'll start with the uh, HBIG or HBIG mm -hmm. and HBIE, which is a, an enhanced or a leveraged version of HBIG, which is the Harvest Balanced Income and Growth ETF. So this is uh, pretty much the first uh, of its kind. It's a balanced uh, ETF. And typically when we hear balanced, correct me if I'm wrong, there's a million balanced style ETFs out there. They typically do a 60-40, right? It's that classic 60-40. 60% equity uh, and 40% in fixed income, things like bonds and whatnot. So let's just start with what what's the premise behind the new HBIG ETF? And of course, well, you know, HBIE is kind of the same thing. So I might be I might be mixing them up, but sure. tell me the premise behind this ETF. Sure. Well, I, well, you made a good point. I mean, there aren't a lot of balanced funds or ETFs cur currently in Canada in the ETF space. They are there are a few. Um, and in our own product line, we didn't have a balanced portfolio and we wanted to generate something that uh, could give you that 60-40 split where you have 60% equity, as you're, as you're saying, and 40% in fixed income. Um, and it's a lineup of, for the most part, our own ETFs. Uh, we do have a couple of ETFs in there on the fixed income side that are shorter duration uh, bond funds that are not our own. But um, the idea is to provide Canadians with that traditional 60-40 split uh, mm -hmm. balanced portfolio, which was very popular. Uh, for a number of years it, it got less popular after the financial crisis and when interest rates went to rock bottom but since we've seen the economy re-emerging uh, and interest rates have crept up quite a bit uh, this strategy seems to make a lot more sense yeah, so we just felt it was a, a good opportunity to launch this especially with the covered calls again which we don't see a lot of in Canada in this strategy so it provided that opportunity for us to bring out that balanced uh, category that balanced growth with uh, a nice uh, income and then the yeah. enhanced version as well that, that's the major difference, right? This is not your classic balanced uh, type of ETF. This is really a covered call or really income uh, approach here compared to, let's say, a, a more of a classic uh, balanced fund like Z-Ball or Z-Ball from BMO. So right. is that the main difference you would say between like a classic balanced fund versus this one? This is really more of an income first uh, approach. Yeah, well, you well, you, you make a good point. I'm, I'm not sure what uh, Z-Ball's yield is, but um, it's about two percent. Two is it? okay. Well, a, a lot of balanced funds uh, or balanced ETFs or balanced asset allocations have yields that are quarterly uh, yes. or annually, uh, and this is uh, I'm not sure if it is the absolute first, but it is one of the first that has a monthly income stream, uh, and that's tied to cover calls and generates that nice yield. So yeah. that's definitely part of the premise behind this. Excellent, excellent. So. Um... Compared to HDIF or HRIF, right? right? Of right. course, H HRIF is the non-leveraged version of HDIF, um, which is another monthly income, high yield, very popular, my mm -hmm. personal favorite uh, ETFs in your in your lineup. Um, if we compare it to HDIF, I noticed a, a few key differences, and I just want to know your why you decided to, to go this route. First of all, it, unlike HDIF or HRIF, it's not equal weight in terms of the equity portion. That's number one. It's not equal weight. It, there, there's, you know, HHL is, is is higher weight than, for example, some of the other ones. Right. right. Um, uh, maybe you could just comment on that first before my next question. Sure. Why did you guys decide not to, you know, to do it uh, that way? Okay. So it's you're right. Uh, HDEF first of all is, is all pretty much all equity strategy. Yeah. Uh, whereas H yeah. big is the combination. Um, part of the HDEF strategy is to have that. And HDEF was launched before the uh, was before, launched before the HREF. As you know, which is the um, the non levered version, yeah. um, but H H diff is uh, really about holding positions, rebalancing back to that pretty much at equal weight. You know, they're between sixteen and eighteen percent percent each of those positions. Uh, there is a little short term position in there as well for uh, for cash or to, to provide a higher yield uh, in there. But otherwise, 
it is for the most part an equal weight strategy, whereas um, uh, H big, sorry, we're going back and forth with names. Yeah, H big is uh, it is more of an asset allocation strategy. I mean, you've got actually thirteen funds combined in that portfolio, uh, anywhere from sort of three percent up to uh, I believe it's twelve and a half percent in HHL, and I think fifteen in uh, H uh, HPYT. Um, so the yeah. idea there is, the man, even though we're always going to go back to that 60-40 split, uh, depending on where the economy is, how things are going, we may allocate more to energy at some point. We may take the energy position down. It's really a little bit more of a uh, asset allocation program with the manager, with regards to the investment manager, with regards to how they want to position sort of quarter to quarter the portfolio. Okay, fair so, enough. For example, yeah. We have a lot of healthcare in there. It's uh, We love healthcare. We think it's got great uh, tailwinds behind it. As you know, we've talked about it on your program before, but we still think even uh, at this point, it's sort of an underviewed or under underowned, if you will, in the marketplace. We still want to be there. So it'll probably remain a, a fairly strong position. Um, HPF, which is our energy position, it's a smaller position. Uh, it's a little more of a volatile area. We're seeing the economy. Uh, we've seen the sort of the resurgence of the U.S. economy. We're seeing a demand of oil. At this point, when we're talking, you're still over 80 bucks a barrel. We think those companies are very profitable and we want to hold into them, but if hold on to them. But if we saw that shift uh, changing, we have the ability to allocate out of that and possibly more into global REITs or more into one of the other areas. So we've got a little bit more flexibility as to how we want to uh, allocate, but the 60-40 strategy does not change. Okay. Yeah, very interesting. And there's also the new your new cover call ETF in there, which we're going to talk about in a second. Yes. The industrial leaders at three percent, just a, a yeah. small position, just like the energy. So, I'm curious again. I got to ask again uh, compared to HDIF. So HDIF has the brands ETF, the travel. Mm -hmm. Those are not in this new ETF, but there's the REITs HGR ETF, there's HIND, and there's the energy one. So, why the difference or why that allocation versus uh, the H diff and any particular reason? Well, I think with regard, first of all, um, we have a smaller portion in equities uh, That's than true, yeah. with 60, but also we wanted to have a little more interest rate sensitivity. So if you've got REITs in there and we love REITs, we think they're very well positioned here. Uh, it's a great time to be owning REITs. If we wanted to have a position in uh, our global REIT uh, portfolio, uh, we also have huddle in there. So our utilities, that's got some interest sensitivity to it. Obviously the bond side has interest sensitivity to it. Um, so it is it is a different focus. Uh, that way it's not as pure sort of long growth like you see in uh, HDIF, but uh, they're, again, it's a little bit more interest rate sensitivity in uh, the big to uh, HDIF. Which would mean when rates get cut, that would be good news for these cyclical sectors, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Especially we, REITs. We, we've been... Uh, we've been in the rate cut camp for since last fall. We never, I think things got out of hand last winter, early last winter when there was a pro thought process that we might get four or five or six cuts. We've always been in that two to three cut range. And we still think that's that's in the cards for the second half of the year. And that will play well for any real fixed income or, or interest sensitive strategy. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. So moving on, let's talk about the fixed income portion. We talked about the equity portion, the 60%. Right. Let's talk about the uh, fixed income portion. So um, you decided to uh, go, uh, some of it's not covered call, right? 15% of it mm -hmm. are those 555 five, five and those short, short term. And whenever you, you see, or I see short, it's, you know, very, very lower risk, lower volatility. You have 5% in T-bill, which is your own Harvest Canadian T-bill ETF, obviously very, very safe. Then you have 5% in the uh, BMO short provincial bond and 5% in XSB, which is the iShare core Canadian short-term bond. So why did you decide to go 15% in no cover calls and 25% in your HPY and happy T 25%? Why not go all in, for example, the covered call ones? Well, uh, great, you made, you made a great point. Um, so if you look at, if you look at the fixed income portion is 100%, 62% is in longer duration uh, ETF. So HPYT and HPYM, they have more volatility. They have much higher yield. They have the cover call rating. Uh, they do a great job in adding that extra income to the portfolio. They'll also have some great upside if we uh, if we do if and when we see rates start to decline. On the shorter duration side, again, you mentioned uh, the two uh, two other products other than Harvest. Everything is sort of core, uh, high end uh, government type portfolios, shorter term. So you lose that volatility, uh, but you're still generating pretty decent cash. I mean, our, even our our T bill fund is a little over five little over five percent uh, cash. 
and the other two funds, they don't have the covered calls, but they are generating income as well uh, in that five plus percent range. So you've got to, I think maybe we've gotten spoiled with where uh, rates have been lately, but it's, you know, to be generating on a pretty much a risk averse basis or low risk basis, 5% plus cash, that's that's a great amount of income to be generating. And that lowers the volatility of the portfolio, which helps keep the uh, right. risk, risk rating down. But at the same time, we've got this 62% of the fixed income portfolio generating this high amount of cash flow. So we think it's a good balance. And as, as we mentioned earlier about the overall portfolio, at some point, we might take a name down and put more into HPYT or more into HPYM. But this is the initial strategy. Okay. Uh, somewhere we are, at, you know, when we launched. Okay. So it is an active approach. You guys do obviously have the ability to, to switch around the, the percentages. And yeah, the yields speak for themselves. I mean, these are new funds less than a year. So we can't really discuss yields, of course. But it doesn't take a rocket scientist to, to calculate it yourself because you have declared the, the, the first monthly distribution. So you could just multiply those by 12 then divide it by the stock price times 100, and you'll get the, the current yield. So very, very high yields there. Right. Um, and I, I would say my final question, this is probably uh, you know one of the que top questions that my audience are gonna have because I'll, many of us own HDIF. So why yeah. would someone choose this balanced, this balanced ETF, whether it's HBIG or HBIE, the enhanced one versus an HRIF or an HDIF? Okay, well, great question. I think it comes down to uh, personal choice. If somebody wants to have a straight long equity uh, positioning, uh, whether that's uh, and with the leverage, HDIF is your uh, your portfolio. It suits that perfectly. There's some great products in that uh, in that portfolio. If someone's really more interested in a balanced approach, where they've got some fixed income and they've got some some equity growth, they've got a little bit of leverage there. In the in the case of the enhanced big uh, balance fund, generating a yield that's pretty much the same. Uh, you know, if you multiply it and so on by 12, it's it's basically about the same yield as uh, HDIF. Uh, it's just a matter of what you're more comfortable with. And there's a lot mm -hmm. of people that like the balanced approach uh, versus just a pure equity, right? So that's, some people may have some of our HPYT, they may have some of our, our HDIF or whatever other funds. This may also be another alternative to sort of combine them all and have it in one portfolio. Yeah, so lots of, I'd lots say of options. It is, yeah, it's really, yeah, it's, it's, it's really a matter of personal choice where you want to allocate. Yeah, I would I would say that the, this balanced one is going to have more you know less volatility than an HDIF, obviously because there there's that there's that fixed income component which is mm -hmm. more stable. So I, I you know if if you would ask me, I would say if you're more of a conservative investor, you would like the HBIE versus the HDIF, but. Mm -hmm. There's you could do you could combine them, you could do whatever you want, which is which is fantastic. These are all. Uh, harvest products that hold other harvest products. That's why the management fee, you know, on top you'll see zero, but obviously it's subject to all the the fees of the other ETF. So there's there's no double management fee. I, I keep getting right. that question as well. You guys are not allowed to charging double management fees. So uh, right. great stuff, great options here, great ETFs to hold that are really diversified. And uh, let's talk about the uh, Harvest Industrial Leaders Income ETF HIND. Right. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is the first ever, as far as I saw, I've seen anyway, industrials sector specific covered call ETF. So tell me a little bit about why you guys launched this ETF. I always think of industrials as kind of like warehouses and manufacturing, hard, you know, airlines, very hard businesses, even transportation. And, and so tell me the premise behind this ETF. Why did you guys sure. decide to launch this? And, and I've got my cheat notes here because I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the sectors and, um, mm -hmm. and it's, our, it's in our Y Invest. So you can take a look at that uh, uh, if you have a chance um, or your investors can. Um, well, first of all, in our product line, you're right. We haven't got an industrials and we felt that we felt it was a great place to be positioning now with uh, there's been some some changes in some of the laws in the United States that have uh, wanted to bring industry back into America from, for the most part, China. Uh, there's been three different laws passed, and you can read about them in that in that piece as well. So that's been very sort of, there's been some tax incentives and things to bring manufacturing back to the United States. But to your earlier point, you're right. I mean, when you think about industries, you think heavy machinery, metal bending businesses, this type of thing, uh, which is why I brought my my cheat notes, because there's there's really, it's really quite a diversified industry. Uh, when you look at it, and I'll just go through eight of the sort of subsectors. You've got electrical equipment, commercial services, ground transportation, which is couriers and all these various uh, companies, machinery, of course, passenger airlines, which people don't really think about, trading companies and distribution networks, uh, aerospace and defense falls in there as well, uh, air freight and logistics. And what's interesting is when you start looking at aerospace and so on, it's also all the components that are made for those 
uh, products. At one time, we did have a space exploration fund, but we didn't really see a lot of have a lot of attention to it. And we we loved the fund because the satellite technology and all the different parts components that were part of that portfolio are doing very very well. And there's huge government orders for these things and corporate orders for them. Well, they're all they're all part of the industrial fund, like right? these types of names. So you've got great diversity. Diversity. You've got a period of time where uh, the U.S. has become very friendly to sort of bringing business back, bringing industry back to the United States. And then from the standpoint of us personally, we're allocating across 20 large cap, well-known companies, for the most part, U.S. businesses, and we're writing options on those to generate the yield. So it's a combination of all those things. And we think it's a great fit. And to sort of go back to HBIG, we really wanted to have that industrial component in there to add diversity to that. It's small. Uh, like energy, but it's still, we want to have a position in there to uh, get some upside on the industrial space in the United States. Yeah, I was surprised when I saw the the uh, the breakdown of the subsector allocation. Yeah. You, you got your, your material and, and your, your graphics are always really, really nice. I mean, you got eight different subsectors. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of diversification within the industrials. I had no idea that it mm -hmm. was that it could be so diversified in there so um, yeah very interesting stuff and it's the classic harvest way you, you got the, the big boys only right the the, the big blue right. chip uh companies that you'll recognize a lot of them and yeah. of course the cover call strategy is going to be the same up to 33 percent. that's the harvest way that's it's capped at 33 active right. approach with the covered calls very nice high yield there so pretty cool now we have another sector another another one added to, to the uh the harvest universe and like you said it, it's a small position in um the new ETF, but that, that could change and, and, and whatnot. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, always nice when a new uh, income oriented ETFs get launched in Canada. Mike, that's all the questions I have for you. I think we covered everything on these three new products, which uh, have launched on April 15th. So they're, they are live. And I recommend you guys, you know, check out the material because the harvest is always has really nice material. Uh, like you alluded to earlier, Michael, I'll put all the links in the video description below so you can check those out so unless there's anything else michael i'm, I'm good to wrap up uh, my friend anything else you you want to mention i'm good uh, only that we appreciate uh, uh working with you adrian and your uh, your 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 clients your followers on youtube because we we appreciate the opportunity to, to talk to direct investors directly and a lot of times being where we are we don't get that opportunity so it's nice to hear from our investors as well people that buy our funds and and uh, to see your support of us so uh Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate that. With you. Appreciate right. that. And same here. I mean, you're all, you're a good friend of the channel. You're always, always willing to come right away and talk to us. So uh, that's very, very appreciated. And looking forward to the new new stuff and keep in touch. And I'm sure we'll we'll see each other soon. We'll talk soon. Take care. You too. You too.